anyone can learn, but to understand something requires real maturity. For years I played until my hands finally caught up to what my ears wanted to hear. Bow hold, sit right, one stroke, one note. Playing badly is better than not playing at all, he said. I needed permission. Permission to fail, to fight, to try, and to try again. I needed someone who believed in me, who would give me the years, the years I needed to grow. Permission to be where I was until I arrived at the place he knew I was capable to be. Happy Sunday, everybody. Hey, uh, welcome. We're so glad you're here. I'm excited uh, to be with the Brazilian ninja himself, Pastor Felipe Santos. Um, let's give it up for Pastor Felipe. Thanks. All the way, all the way from South San Jose. Um, it, we're in the middle of a message series here called Hero Maker, and we're talking about how do we live our lives in such a way that it's really not all about us at the end of the day. We've been wrestling through the question, what could happen if we made a shift and we said, um, it what if God used everything he placed in our lives not to be the hero of our story, but to make heroes of others? So throughout this series, we're looking at five hero maker practices. Um, and those practices basically are a question of for you and me, how do we do this in our personal lives? Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to sh- change our focus and we're going to go from the personal focus of making heroes to collectively what would it look like for our church to be a hero-making church? That at the end of the day, it's really not all about us. And realizing that God has blessed us as a church to be a blessing. And this is so much of the vision that God has really been putting in front of us to shift our perspective to say, God's given us resources, He's given us leaders, He's given us um, people to make a difference here in the Bay Area, to start other churches, and we're going to expand more and more, start campuses, and reach people in our community who have never heard the message and love of Jesus. Now, in, in light of all of this, when we look at our projects in just a moment of things that are coming up in 2019, Uh, Every year at the end of the year for us as a church, it's a season of generosity, and it's a time where we give generously, and we do this, we've been doing it from the very beginning where we give above and beyond our regular generosity. This is an offering that we do annually that basically goes towards our missions projects, church planting, things beyond the walls, making a difference in our community, and this year we're framing it all around the lens of hero making, being a hero making church. So what we want to do today, because next week is the day that we're all going to bring our offering together, we wanted to highlight what the offering is going to go towards in in 2019 and some of the exciting projects that we're going to be doing together as a church. That's right. But before we go into 2019 projects, we thought it'd be cool to highlight what's happened in the previous year. So uh, Pastor Andy mentioned we've been doing this every year. And in 2017, uh, we had a year-end offering called the Echo Offering. And it went toward global missions and local outreach and expansion projects as well. Uh, And it went toward rebranding our church from South Bay Church to Echo Church so that we would uh, really embody the mission that God's given us, that what happens here in the Bay can echo around the world. And so because of your generosity, we we had over 400,000 dollars we invested into these projects of rebranding and then taking our initiatives to a whole nother level which produced a whole lot of fruit and I want to share with you some of the fruit that we experienced in 2018 so far listen to this uh, so far 381 people made decisions to follow Jesus here at Echo Church 100 <laughs> And 78 of them got baptized. And then listen to this. I love this one. 138 Echo groups were launched this fall. Record number, number of groups. And then in the Sunnyvale campus, uh, Sunnyvale launched over, they had groups for over 100% of their attendance got connected. So that was like uh, first time ever in our history. We should give it up for the Sunnyvale campus. They were able to do that. 
We're now, we're now averaging 2,300 plus people a weekend here at Echo. Our South Campus, one of our prayers uh, as we transitioned a new campus pastor into the role so that Pastor Philip could lead the way with Foster the Bay that we'll talk in a little bit. Um, but we've been praying that they would break the 300 mark this year. And they've now had several Sundays on a, in a row that they were uh, uh, over 300 in attendance, which is awesome to celebrate as yep. well. Um, and then 370 kids a week almost 100 students a week getting impacted in our next-gen ministries. And I love this one. 600 people at Echo Church this fall served our community at our serve day, really impacting our city in a significant way. And then the North Campus alone had over 400 of those people that went to serve the community. And I think you guys should give yourselves a hand of applause yeah. for that as well. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say what you were supposed to say, but all I, right, I didn't I'll, I'll finish the last one. I know you like <laughs> this one. We'll talk more about this, but God's given us an opportunity to really be a resource church for local uh, Bay Area churches and leaders. And uh, this fall, we hosted a conference and several training events that trained over 500 local pastors and leaders. And it's really cool to see what God's been doing with that and opening doors so that we can have not only a city impact, but more of a regional one as well. Yeah, and it's so good for us as a church to stop and celebrate all the great things that God is doing. And there are so many of you who are part of this vision where you are serving, you're giving, you're bringing your friends, you're investing in your lives and other people. And the fruit that we're experiencing is because of you. In Psalm 100, it says that we should enter into God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That means that that's part of the reason why we, like, it's loud here, we celebrate, we clap a lot. Because God has been good to us and he's blessed us. So we're celebrating his faithfulness to our church. We're celebrating you and what God has done through you. And I think about this a lot, like with my kids. Uh, uh, some of you guys, you have kids where you do something for your kid. And then like immediately after you've done something for your kid, they want the next thing. Anybody else? Like they don't even say thank you. They're just like right on to the next thing. It's like, can I get some gratitude up in here? Um, and this is how we often are with God. That we, we get blessed by God. And then we forget all the great things that he's just done. And so much of our future is framed with his past faithfulness to look back. If God never did another thing for us, he's already done enough. Yep. He's already done enough. He's blessed us as a church. He's grown our impact. More than that, he's given us his son so that we can have eternal life. He's deposited his spirit into us. He's a good God. He's faithful. He's powerful. He's mighty. So if you're willing, will you just bow your heads with me for just a moment? Let's thank God for what he's done so far this year. Father, we thank you for how good you are. And we frame our future as we, we turn a corner to look at what's next. Um, we know that you've been so good. You'll keep being good. And in light of that goodness, God, help us dream. Reminded of how your word says that without vision, the people perish. And I pray that you'd put your vision in our hearts, a vision to believe that there's no limit to what you can do through our lives together. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your good deeds, for your faithfulness, for using our lives in spite of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus said one time in John chapter 14, verse 12, one of my favorite verses of the New Testament so far this year in the book of John in the 14th chapter. Um, he said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I've done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. Jesus wanted his disciples to have a vision. We looked at this a few weeks ago that God could use their lives to do great things. And a part of what I'm praying for you today is a bigger vision for you and for us. So this summer, I went away to, to pray about that. I went on my annual summer study break, which basically just means I hold up, read a bunch of books, and pray about the future, and work on future sermons. So I went away, and during that time, I started reflecting on a lot of the things that God's done over the last 10 years, just thanking Him like we've done this morning. And um, I started sensing God saying, okay, now, now's the time to turn the corner to start looking towards the future of what I have for you as a church What's next? What's the next five years going to look like if, as you close the chapter on the first 10? And as we reflected, one of the things that we started to realize is some of the most fruitful things that we've experienced as a church has been when we started new churches, we've started new campuses, and we've served locally in our community. So we started dreaming, and I believe God deposited into our hearts this vision that we're calling the 555 vision. And we're saying, what would it look like 
over the next five years to have bold faith that God can do more in the next five years, to start five new campuses, five new churches in this period of time, believing that there would be a day where within every person of the Bay Area, with 10 to 15 minutes of every person in the Bay Area, there is a thriving local church that is life-giving where a person could go and experience the love of Jesus. That's, that's what we're marching forward with. And we've seen God exceed expectations in our history, so it might end up being six or seven, but we believe that that clarity is going to help us focus. So today, we're going to look at, in 2019, how that's going to happen, how we're going to move forward. So there are three big categories we'll, we'll walk through about making heroes. We're going to talk about making heroes globally with the bigger vision of being overseas as a church. Number two, we're going to talk about making heroes regionally. And then number three, we're going to look at how do we make heroes on a local level. All right, so we're going to start with our global initiatives. Over the last several years, we've started strategic partnerships in key countries that allow us to have long-term impact uh, through those relationships. So we, we're, we, we, in fact, we have a team in Singapore right now. We've worked in Italy, Nicaragua, Ethiopia. But I want to highlight for the sake of time just three of these initiatives or regions of the world that we are together making an impact in. One of them is in countries where, we, uh, where there are what we call unreached people groups where uh, less than 1% of the population um, knows Jesus or is exposed to the message of Jesus. And oftentimes these countries are hostile to, the, to Christianity and people of faith, especially when it comes to spreading his message. And so we've been able to really get behind people that are doing what we call missionary work. They're Christian leaders that are taking the message of Jesus from town to town. One of these countries in Southeast Asia, they are um, using coffee business to really expand, uh, like they're expanding the coffee business and through that they are sharing the message of Jesus. So we actually just had a leader go out and take these pictures this month uh, in one of these countries and help them with strategies around how to expand their business in order to expand the message of Jesus in the country. Um, One other couple that we sponsor is in another country in the Middle East, and they spent some time with our staff a few months back. And it was so eye-opening for us to hear their story because they had to change their whole lifestyle to move to this country and they are in a country where 99% of people are Muslims, and oftentimes in, in their community where they're at, there's a lot of hostility toward Christianity. And they said, you know, even for us to share the name of Jesus is, is strange because the image that people have of Christianity in this place where they live is only stuff that they've seen in little glimpses on TV. And most of that is like uh, mu- music videos on MTV and sorts where there's like these people wearing crosses, but they're dancing with naked women around them and a lot of drug use around them. And, and people correlate Christianity with that image yeah. in that place. And they said, so we're trying to share the love of Jesus, but really what they, what they think Jesus is is nothing like Jesus. And so they're doing the groundwork or the hard work of really uh, taking the message to a place where a lot of people are not willing to go. And we talk a lot about this. Like part of the reason we do this is Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, take my message to the ends of the earth. And the scriptures clearly tell us that he's only going to return when every people group have experienced him or have, uh, have been exposed to him. And so that's what we're trying to do together as a church. Not only that, but we're also um, really growing our partnership in Brazil. And I love this one because I'm Brazilian, but there's a lot of Brazilians at Echo. And we've been able to make a significant impact in that country in two different ways. First way is a few years back, we had a year-end giving initiative, very similar to this one, where we challenged you to give big, and you gave $80,000 to even just specifically the Brazil Project, and it went towards starting a church that you can see pictures of here uh, in the northern part of Brazil in a really poor community where they were very under-resourced and in a lot of need, uh, not just physically but spiritually. So we got behind a local pastor. He started the church. built. We built the building together with them, um, uh, sent team out there, to, out there to serve them. In partnership with Compassion International, they sponsor now over 700 children in their local community, and they're releasing the, these kids from poverty, providing health care, education, spiritual nourishment to these children that before this church had started had nothing. And it's amazing what's happened. I want to show you one picture of something that happened this year. There's a little hut. Can you put that picture on the screen? So the pastor Nazareno from this church called us this year 
And he said, look, you guys have already done so much for us, but there's one specific family in our church that is so needy. They have been living, there's, I think, I forget, like almost a, um, 10 or so people in this little hut that you see where rain comes through and the, it was flooding all the time. And they said, we don't have the resources to get them to a better place. So would you guys uh, help us? So we're like, of course. So part of the fund that we raise is for these things. So we gave them three or four extra thousand dollars and they built this other house that you'll see here in just a second where this family moved into. And it's quite an upgrade for them. In fact, it's one of the better houses in the community now. Uh, and it's amazing. One example of how this happens. In fact, what I love about it is that that family living in that home uh, sees their local church as the hero, not us. And it's part of our vision of getting behind people that are doing significant work and just fueling their work. Uh, another big project in Brazil is what we call the Orange Project. And if you've been serving in uh, Echo uh, Kids or students here at, at our church, you know we use this curriculum called the Orange Curriculum, which really is an integration of like the family partnering with the local church to make a difference in the young generation. And in America, this curriculum took over. It's the best and most used curriculum in local churches. But in Brazil, there's nothing really like this. So our team of Brazilians here at Echo uh, and a, a team of Brazilians in Brazil partnered and we started translating the curriculum in order to take it to the entire country. And so we already did, I think, three age groups. And now through our generosity this year, we're going to take it, we're going to finish the translation. We already hosted a conference that you can see on the screens um, that hundreds of pastors came to. And then we're launching the curriculum uh, countrywide uh, in the coming months. So really fun, the impact that we're going to have together there. It's amazing. That's Go back to that last picture. Yeah. That's Felipe's mom and dad right there. <laughs> so you can know how he got to be so good looking. Um, exactly. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, when you think about overseas in places like Brazil, one of the things that it's hard to realize here in the United States, we have so many resources at our fingertips, you know, in terms of the internet and the local church. But a lot of these countries, they don't have the resources that we have. That's why it's so powerful. We can impact a whole nation of churches through what we're doing through the Orange Curriculum is phenomenal. Yeah. Can I share one more? Yeah, go for it. So uh, one more pa uh, our country that we're impacting is Mexico. And we've been able to get behind uh, a great leader there. His name is Ignacio Antonio Hernandez Rodriguez. That's so, the All Names Club yeah. right there. <laughs> Amazing name. Uh, but Somebody even just better said person. they're naming their next kid that right there. <laughs> exactly. You can name your kid after that, that man. Say it one more time. Uh, just for uh, that man, I, Ignacio Antonio Hernandez Rodriguez. I don't know if it's I said amazing. that right. I'm, that's my Brazilian version of it. Um, but he's a director of of a drug rehab center that has been housing now over 100 men and young, um, young boys and that are coming out of drug addiction. And it's been a very successful ministry. And it's been, it's been working so well that they now decided to try to expand and do the same thing for women and young girls that are in drug addiction. So our generosity this year is going to help them expand their ministry. And it's in partnership with a local church there as well. So they're growing the local church in conjunction with this uh, drug rehab center. And it's making a tremendous difference out there. So I uh, really encourage you to take a trip. And I know you encouraged that before, but it makes a huge, huge difference when you're able to go and experience what God's doing globally uh, through our, our generosity and our partnership and in the lives of these people that are so faith-filled around the country. So take a trip this coming year. Yeah. Go to echo.church slash missions. You can see all the dates of the trips and you can experience firsthand what God's doing globally. Yeah, and I, I don't mean to overemphasize like what you've already said, but I think for every person in our church who follows Jesus, that it should be on our bucket list at some point yeah. during our life to, to get overseas, to get outside of our comfort zone. Uh, I know one of the things we love about our church is we have people from all different nations, mm -hmm. and a lot of you came overseas to the United States. Um, for those who've never been on a mission trip overseas, God does something in your heart that's mm -hmm. supernatural there, and he'll, he'll grow you. Sometimes you'll grow more in a week overseas than you will in years here yeah. in the States of just doing life. And so I want to encourage you to take that trip next year, maybe even get on a rotation where you're going every year, a couple of years, because God's going to use it in a powerful way in your life. Mm -hmm. um, now, as we shift, we went global. Now we're going to look at regional. And um, I'm excited to talk about this because uh, when we think about the regional impact, God has really been expanding our, our influence as a church. Uh, he's making us more and more, one of the more influential churches in our region to start new churches 
to bless other churches who are going here, to invest some of the things that we're learning as a church into others. And we start, when we started, we were like, you know what, if we're going to reach the area, it can't be one church. You know, it can't be just about our church growing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of churches. So um, we helped start a few churches. We, actually, now it's been 15 churches since we began in the last 10 years that God's given us the privilege of investing in those churches. Five of them here in the Bay Area, we've invested deeper. What I mean is we've, we've sent people to go to those churches. We sent larger sums of money. Um, pastors from those churches came on staff or did apprenticeships with us, and then we would send them out. I was really excited because a few weeks ago, I got some text messages from the different pastors and through the five churches that we've helped start, including ours, um, together are reaching close to 4,000 people every single week, which is awesome. Mm. And when you start to really think about what is possible over the long haul, if we start more churches, it's unbelievable. Um, I love this quote from Ali, he and his wife, Yasmin Ruhi, they're from Centerset Church. Um, at uh, Santana Row. This is what he says about the partnership with Echo Church. He says, I want to personally say thank you, Echo, for believing in my wife and I to start a church to reach those who are far from God. We just celebrated our one-year anniversary this fall, and I'm so amazed at what God is doing. We don't want to ever treat the extraordinary as ordinary because your support as a hero maker, we've seen 58 people say yes to Jesus for the first time. We've baptized 13, and we are now reaching 117 people for our w- weekly attendance, and we believe the best best is yet to come. How awesome is that? Awesome. In addition to that, uh, our partnership with Easttown Church in San Ramon continues uh, to expand. They're reaching about 150 people on a weekly basis. They're only seven months old as a church. So um, part of what we're doing with the Hero Maker offering is to continue those partnerships and then help start new churches next year. The other thing that happened with church planting in 2018 for us was that we had the privilege of doing some really important events to impact church planters and church leaders in our region. Uh, Exponential, which is one of the largest uh, church planting movements globally, does a conference And they're starting to do more of these regional conferences. They reached out and said, hey, would you be willing to to start or to help with the Bay Area Conference? We want to host it there. Would you guys be willing to open your doors? So we prayed about it, and we felt like God was really saying, this is something I want you to do. We were able to have over 500 Bay Area church leaders at this event. It was the largest known church planting gathering in Bay Area history, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, at that event, CNBC caught word that this was happening heard of some other things that are happening through Echo and Transforming the Bay with Christ, which is another organization we're a part of. And they said, hey, could we actually do like a, an article or do a video on what's happening there? And so I want you to see what CNBC um, put together, just highlighting the efforts of, of what God is doing in the Bay Area. The San Francisco Bay Area is home to the least church-going population in the United States. of the population does not attend church, and one-third of all residents claim no religious affiliation. But there's a group out to change that. The Exponential Conference recently came to the Bay Area for the second year in a row. The gathering is meant to catalyze evangelical Christian leaders to start new churches. It's called church planting, and the goal of the conference, as the name suggests, is the exponential growth of the religious community. This is kind of the trade show for church planting. Exponential is that. It's the largest gathering of church planting and church planters uh, in the world that we know of. It's American entrepreneurialism and capitalism displayed uh, through evangelical Protestant Christianity. The conference takes place across seven cities, and the Bay Area event drew some prominent figures at the intersection of the church and tech communities, like Pat Gelsinger, CEO of the $60 billion software company VMware. Seven of the top 10 market cap companies in the world are now technology companies. Wealthy, influential, but, next slide, also broken and without faith. I'm a full-time minister of VMware, and I have uh, 23,000 souls that are under my uh, leadership. Gelsinger donates nearly half his annual income to charity, much of it directed to church planting organizations. One of my goals in the Bay Area would be that we're as innovative in our technology and startups as we are innovative in our church planting and startup churches. Sometimes this means starting a new church from scratch, and sometimes it means creating spin-offs of a successful congregation. 
My vision would be that we'll plant a thousand new churches in the Bay Area over the next decade. But these churches may look different than you'd imagine. Forget ornate architecture and stained glass windows. Just as everyone's become accustomed to billion dollar companies starting in garages and dorm rooms, these startup churches also meet just about anywhere. You'll hear stories of people who starts in their living room. Uh, a lot of them meet in schools. A lot of them will be as they get larger in office parks. The Exponential Conference was held in an office park in San Jose at Echo Church. Echo started in 2008, and since it's expanded to three locations. What's up, Exponential? Lead pastor Andy Wood is in his 30s. At services, he hosts young Christian rock bands, complete with dramatic concert lighting. A part of the benefit of being in more modern buildings is that we're able to take the experience that somebody might be having as they're working at Google or Apple or Facebook, and they're listening to music that sounds similar to what they hear on the radio, and they're hearing messages that even have similarities to TEDx talks, and there's a commonality that allows there to be a greater level of openness. Good morning, would you stand with us? Come on, let's put our hands together as we worship Jesus. Echo Church even offers online services every Sunday for those who can't attend in person. Welcome to Echo Church. We are so glad you're here today. People are already living so much of their lives digitally. So rather than fight that wave, we want to enter into that space to say, okay, if somebody's spending you know, massive amounts of time on their phone, well, we, we want to be able to provide hope in that place where they're already living. Other congregations are doing much the same. Menlo Church, for example, offers their sermons in podcast form. It underwent a major rebrand in 2015 and now boasts a slick website, an active Twitter and Instagram presence, and about 6,000 weekly worshipers across six campuses. Church planters have also found common ground with Bay Area residents over a shared entrepreneurial spirit. Phrases like return on investment and product market fit flow in conversations with church planters. You know, it's not coffee and donuts, it's okay. What's the business plan? What's the milestones? What's the schedule? You know, what's the demographics? Why, why are people gonna come to your church? What are your messages? And that kind of urgency matches the environment of the Bay Area. When Wood started Echo Church, he created a 10 to 12 page strategic plan that he presented to potential funders. We would go to different pastors and churches and leaders and pitch our vision to them um, and share with them the need or the opportunity for them to partner with us financially and invest in this new endeavor. We were able to raise over a million dollars to get this new church off the ground. Wood's church is typical and that it usually costs over a million dollars for a new church plant to reach sustainability in the Bay Area. However, there's a number of organizations that essentially provide venture capital for new congregations. Gelsinger is the chairman of the board at one of these groups, called Transforming the Bay with Christ, which aims to convert one million people over the next decade. In order to do so, it hopes to raise $15 million for what it calls its startup church funds. It's easier to create something new than resurrect something that's dying. And uh, when a church is on a decline, there are usually reasons for it. Some of the research shows that uh, 40 to 50 percent of people that attend new church plants are from an unchurched background. We want to delight our customers. We want to serve people and have people-centered design at the focus of what we do. The difference, of course, is that if these startups succeed, there's no acquisition or IPO. We just said to everybody who invested in our church that there's a reward in, in heaven, there's an eternal reward for investing. You just have to die to invest your stock. <laughs> well, I hope that that encourages you to realize that, you know, all, so much of what God is doing is not, it's not because of our great giftedness. It's in spite of us. It's his grace upon our church. And so we want to lean into this to say the blessing that God has given to us is so that we can be a blessing to other people to impact our entire region with the message of Jesus. Yeah, I, I was, uh, we were talking about what Jesus said about this. He said, let your good deeds shine for all to see 
so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. And every time we do this, we embody the message of Jesus in our community and we serve and we give and we contribute to the city. Uh, we are really shifting people's eyes to the Father and we become a bridge of eternal life for people. So it's just so significant in this work. Um, but not only are we impacting or making heroes globally or regionally, but there's also a local expression of this. And it's really exciting to know what God's been doing already locally here. Um, we're gonna continue to do what we've already been doing, but just amplify it to a larger degree. So we serve our community through block parties and city festivals and uh, school impact initiatives. But a couple of our uh, initiatives that have been most fruitful, uh, I want to share with you a little bit of what's been happening with them. One of them is what we call the Trash Punks Initiative. And it was started by a, a punk rocker himself here at Echo Church, uh, Justin Imamura. It started as an Echo group and it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And now the city has recognized uh, Trash Punks as a major initiative in the community. And now hundreds of people are going to pick up trash uh, in their communities and really cleaning up key areas of San Jose that have been really looking like a dump. And I, we have a lot of work to, to do, uh, but it's been so fruitful to see that. Uh, this fall, I shared with you earlier, 600 of our volunteers, along with Trash Punk, served our community. And the cool thing that happened out of that is that the mayor came as well to some of our events. And this week, we got a call from the city council chain of a chamber office or whatever it's called, <laughs> chamber. chamber. And they uh, basically said, hey, we, we like you guys to come over and we want to give you a commitment award, a recognition for your city to the community. So this week, our local campus pastor here in San Jose, David, is going to go meet with the mayor uh, and the city staff, and they're going to give us an award along with Trash Punks for our service to the community. So that's really because of you uh, that we've been able to send that image to the community. Uh, and then lastly, just highlighting one more initiative locally that's been one of our favorites to watch expand, which is Foster the Bay. Foster the Bay, uh, the mission is to provide a loving home for every child in the foster care system. And really the ultimate vision is to one day have a waiting list of families waiting for kids instead of a waiting list of kids that are waiting for families. And we're gonna get there, guys. We're on the pathway to, to that place. Uh, here's the, what we've seen already so far up to this year. Now, Foster the Bay is in five counties in the Bay Area. 52 partner churches have uh, joined forces with us. There are 64 foster families now active. 254 support friends. These are friends that get behind foster families. They say, we can't foster, but we will support you as you do. And then listen to this. 129 children have now been placed in Foster the Bay Homes since we started. Awesome. It's amazing to celebrate that. Yep. Yeah, and um, as, as we kind of wrap up our time together, there's one last project that I want to share with you. And that's around what is coming up with our fourth campus. And mm -hmm. I shared a couple weeks ago this unbelievable door that God has opened for us. We started praying through with that 555 vision, where is the next place that we're going to go? And we just noticed that we have a lot of people coming from the East Bay. And as we started that conversation, we reached out to another church. We started talking to them. It's called Mission Springs Community Church in Fremont. And one of the things that they noticed is that their attendance was declining over the course of time. And they said, you know what? We have this building. It's not okay with us that we're not filling it up with people. So let's find somebody who is filling buildings up and let's work together. So we started the conversation. They voted a few weeks ago uh, basically to become Echo Fremont to give their building to our church. And in doing so, now we'll become the fourth campus. It's almost all paid off. Um, it gives us tremendous opportunity to provide a church in the community where so many of you are living. We had our first meeting this week expecting about 20 leaders to show up. It was an interest meeting for people who wanted to lead, not just help, serve, but lead. Expected 20 people to come, up, come out for it. We had over 60 people show up for the meeting. It was awesome. So we prayed over that building. Um, and by God's grace, uh, Lord willing, we are going to start that campus in the spring of 2019, somewhere around the Easter time. And we're believing God for, for great things. We're believing that he's going to continue to expand our influence. And most importantly, it's so much easier to be the church when you go to church in the community that you live in. That's why we've embraced, embraced multi-site. Like I'm, I'm watching today in the service that I'm in, and so many of you are looking at the screen, not looking at, <laughs> at, at me when I'm talking. 
And um, <laughs> what we are doing is we're taking those screens that people are already often looking at and we're moving them into the communities where people live. And there's no limit to what God can do if we can work together to get campuses and church plants into all the communities across the Bay Area. And so as God's opened this amazing door, we're believing for great things in 2019. That's why the Hero Maker offering is so important for us as a church Mm -hmm. because it's going to all these things that we've already talked about over the last 25 to 30 minutes that we've had together. And what I want to encourage you to do is today to go back and to pray and to ask God how he would have you to be a part of it. If you haven't already on your way out today, I want to encourage you to grab one of these books. We'll have people at all of our doors passing them out. Inside, there's more information about the projects, more information about how you can give. But most importantly, what I want to ask you to do as you pray is to come back next week prepared to let us know how you're going to participate. This is an offering that we give above and beyond our regular generosity. It's a big goal. We're praying that God would help us raise $500,000 for these projects. You can see from the screen that it's all different sizes. There are some people in our church that $50,000 is not a sacrificial gift. Maybe God would have you do more than that. There are other people in our church that to give away $100 is a major sacrifice. The goal is not equal amounts. The goal is equal sacrifice. It's for us to ask God, in light of all that you've done for me, in light of the vision you're putting in front of us as a church together, what do you want me to do to be a part of this? I have great confidence in you, and I have great great confidence in the Holy Spirit because You've been faithful. You've been a church from the very beginning to have bold faith to say there, there's no hill that's too big for us. There's no sacrifice that we're unwilling to make. We're the kind of people that don't see obstacles as barriers. We see them as opportunities for God to do great things. We call this our value of bold faith. And we live with a kind of irrational generosity. That's one of the things that God is blessing. It's a group of people that says, you know what? It's not about me. It's not about my comfort. At the end of the day, what's most important is I'm going to stand before God and the only thing that's going to matter is what did I invest in that was eternal? Did I give my life to things that weren't just here and now? All the things of this world that are, that are purely physical aside from people, aside from the kingdom of God, it will pass away. But when you stand before Jesus, you and I will be entered in by God's grace as we put our trust into him to walk him for all eternity to walk with him. And the kingdom of God, the things that we've invested in that were eternal, those will stand too. And so when I invite you to participate, to be a part of the kingdom of God, I do it with boldness and I do it with confidence that you'll be blessed as you, as you take this step and you'll find fulfillment. And one day when you look back, and I can give you story after story after story, of people from our church who said, you know what? I'm going to live in such a way that I invest my life in the kingdom of God. There's great joy in that. There's great joy to look back over a decade and say, you know what? None of us could have done this on our own. None of us could have accomplished this in our own power. But when we come together and we give and we serve and we pray and we invest, God does the the impossible through our lives together. And we're believing that for 2019. So I want to encourage you Go back, pray, come back with this little card right here, this commitment card. Um, You'll get these at the door as well. On the back of it, you'll see a place where you can can write down what your commitment is. And also a hero maker prayer. Like what's your prayer that you're asking God for in 2019? It's going to be a great week next week as we do that. Before we conclude, I want to share one story with you. Um, This is from Fabian. Fabian Perez attends our South San Jose campus. Started attending... Uh, about a year and a half ago, and he said that when he started coming to church, he was in this great place of anxiety. He was disconnected from God. He, he was living apart from the joy that God wanted him to experience, and he had heard about e- Echo Church from a friend of his. That friend invited him to come. He said the very first Sunday that he came to church, he was so nervous, and some of you probably can remember that the very first time that you came, and maybe even today is that day. He said, but when he got closer, and he heard the music, and he saw the people, He saw the smiles on people's faces. He felt welcomed. He felt embraced. He got into the service and he said, that day it felt like everything in the service was designed exactly for me, down to the message. And the message that day was about Jesus and how he had pulled Peter out of the water one time. And he said, I felt like that day I was drowning myself and I needed Jesus to rescue me. And God pulled me up. I surrendered my life to him. I started getting joy in my life. I started finding purpose in my life. 
I get, got connected into an echo group, and he said on his birthday this year, instead of getting a gift for his birthday, he decided that he would give God a gift for his birthday, the gift of himself, and fully surrender his life and get baptized. He got baptized in May of this year, and God's using him to do amazing things, and that's just one story of what God does. We say here as a church, everything that we do is about seeing Jesus change lives. And I believe that there are a lot of people in Fremont, there are a lot of people in Sunnyvale and San Jose, there are a lot of people in all these partnerships that need that grace, that need God's goodness. And when we lock arms together, we pray, we serve, we give, we believe that God's gonna continue to do greater things through our lives together. We're believing that 2019 is gonna be the most fruitful year that we have yet. Amen? Amen. Will you pray for us? I'd love to. Father, we're so grateful that you use people like us to change the world. And we believe there are so many great things to come. We give you glory and thank you for uh, the amazing things that you've already done. And then we ask, God, that you would do immeasurably more, that you would use our hands, our brokenness, use our voices, use our service to you, God, to show the world the love that you have for them. God, I pray that you would help us to amplify our global initiatives and our regional impact and our local impact as well until every person hears your name and understands that you desire to be with them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.